Imagine you have a box and you can put anything inside that box and you can label that box anything. This box is like a Python variable. You can name this box and store any kind of data inside this box, be it string, boolean, numbers, list, anything. Majorly there are two kinds of variable in Python, global and local. But both of them are like that box which we talked earlier. To create a Python variable, let's directly jump into the code. I want the name of the variable to be name. And then in order to assign data to it, we have to put equal to and then whatever kind of data we want to assign. Say if you wanted to assign a number, you could have just typed in number over here and it would have worked. But I want to assign name or string over here. So my name is Shubham. So I will type in that. And this is how we declare our first Python variable. And I have saved this file as variables.py.py. And in order to run this file, I just have to do Python 3 and name of the file. So variables.py. I'm going to click enter. And it was executed successfully, but there was nothing to do other than assignment of this variable. So it did nothing. You know what? Let's try to print this. Print as in like to show on the screen. So over here, I'm going to put this name, the variable name over here and it will print it. Let's do run it again. And as you can see, it printed Shubham. Now let's say if you wanted to assign number over here. So I will create another variable called as age and I will type in 27 and will print age over here. So in order to print more than one data in print, we just have to put a comma and then print the next or type in the next variable or an, uh, or whatever you want to print. I'm going to run this again. And as you can see now it says Shubham and 27. Let's say I wanted to change it. So I will say name as code with SJ. And let's say the age of this channel is say four years. So I will type in four. And let's try to rerun this program. And now it says code with SJ and four. Do you notice that we were able to reassign the same variable over here? So now you must be thinking that what if I assign name with age by mistake? So let's try to do that. Assign it as 15. And it changed to 15 and four. So these kind of glitches are also possible in Python. So you have to be careful of how you design your variable name. And secondly, another safeguard could be using typing in Python, whereby just like TypeScript, we assign the type of variable over here and then go ahead with it. But that is tutorial for another video. So let's continue on this one. Now let's look at how to get the user's input over here. So for that, I'll create another file. I'll call it as input.py. And in this one, first we want to get name, right? So let's do one thing in order to get input from the user, that is user should type the data. I have to just type in input and we can do it like this. Save. Let me clear this and we'll say Python input.py. Sorry, it is Python three and not Python for me. And it, it will wait over here. We don't get anything or we don't have any information as to what we have to enter, right? So let's say I enter SJ and nothing happens. So let me do one thing. We'll put something or label for this input like we put in HTML. So let's say enter your name. So this is the label for this input and we'll run it again. And it says enter your name. I'll say SJ and it still doesn't look good, right? We'll put a is to and put a space and let's rerun it. Now it has this label with is to and space. So we can put SJ over here and yeah, that worked. But we want to use whatever the user has entered in further in our program. So that means we want to assign it to a variable, right? So we can do that also name is equal to this. And let's print this. Okay. So print name or you know what? Let's get crazy and say your name is dash. So for that, I'll use F string over here. Your name is, and since it is a variable, so I'm going to encapsulate it inside this curly braces and close the double quotes, save it. And let's do this. It is asking me for my name. I put it 
and then your name is SJ. So this is cool, right? Now let's say you ask for the name from the user. Now you want to ask for password. Let's try to do that. Enter your password. Let's print the password also. Over here we are going to type in password. Let me quickly clear it and rerun it. SJ and you know whenever we enter password in HTML for anywhere or anywhere we have that star 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 and right now if I enter password over here it is visible and you must have seen the same thing in terminals also whenever you are asked to enter the password it comes as blank whenever you're typing let's implement that for that there is something called as get pass so I will import that import get pass and from here instead of input we are going to change it to get pass dot get pass okay and now let's run the program sj and if i now enter the password it is going blank nothing is being shown and i will click enter although it is showing over here which we should not be doing that is printing the password but when we are typing it is going blank right that is crazy and it is this easy to get your password hidden from the user we'll also get the age from the user okay i want to sh use this thing in the next part of this video so that's why we are getting age from the user also and we'll remove password and say your name is this and your age is this sj and i will say 27 uh, let me enter some password and it says your name is this and your age is this okay this is correct we are going to use this age in the next part of the section now let's look at data types in python there are majorly nine building data types in python they are majorly number set dictionary and sequence and they are further divided into subsections so numeric data type represents the number you have seen one of the number type is age then we have sequential that is like string you have already seen then you have list then you have tuples we'll see it in the later video then we have boolean type which is either true or false so this is true or it is false then we have set and none is also a type of data in python whereby we don't want to assign anything in the uh, in the data but we want a variable to be declared so that is when we use none it is similar to null in javascript and you know what in order to check the data type of any variable we can use is type we have to pass the variable inside the type and it will return us with the type of data so let's create another file and call it as data types dot pi and in this we'll copy name and age from the input type okay and even best thing we'll copy this one and paste it over here for now and we'll try to print the type in order to find the name type of the name we are going to use create another variable okay so name type and it will be equal to type and we'll pass in name over here and then print this so print type of name is and we'll pass it in uh, curly braces name underscore type and of course we have missed the f string over here so we will put that f over here then only this variable will be printed or replaced by the actual data over here so let me clear this and we'll type in python 3 and data types and as you can see it says class of string so this is a class of string and you know what we can replace this name type directly with this so we'll copy it and paste it over here since I did not want it to make it complex at start itself. So that's why I assigned it to a variable and then used that. So let me clear this and the format as you can see is type and then in that we are passing uh, whatever the variable is. And if you want to get crazy, you can just pass in this also. But of course we know that it will be string type. So I'll just skip that. Now let's look at the type of the age. Okay, I'll save it and we'll run this. So over here it says int, that is correct. 
but you know what now let's try to take the input from the user and we'll comment this let's run the program and it will ask for name why it is asking for name because i have put name over here i'm sorry about that we have replaced it with age and now let's run the program it is asking me for age i'll put in 27 itself but if you notice it is saying the class is three and not int why is this because whenever we take input from the user it becomes a type of string and not int so in order to convert this into int right whatever the user has provided us we will have to do it explicitly and for that we can use i and t that is explicitly convert the data type into integer encapsulate this entire thing in the i and t and now let's save this and we'll run it again let's say this time 25 and it says now integer class of int int means integer in python so just now we covered the integer data type now let's look at boolean i will comment all this so boolean is all about true or false or zero and one so let's try to decode that I, i'll say if i'm alive so is alive and always make sure you're like using naming convention like this that is in python we use it by uh, separated by underscore because that is what is specified in guidelines whenever we start any variable name with is we are expecting it to be a boolean that is what normal naming convention is and is followed by most of the developers so that's why we are using it is alive let's say i am true i'm alive of course so we will have to say true i'm not yet dead print type of is alive let's save this clear and run it it says bull that is correct let's say i am saying is dead false because i am not yet dead and we'll put it over here and we'll run it this is also type bull now you know what internally these are also type of integer or type of number so instead of this we can use even 0 or 1 so let me show you an example let's say if we are saying if is watching video if you are watching video this will become true okay and we'll assign it to be true for now we'll comment all this and you know what we'll also print the data over here so what i'm doing is i'm assigning a variable i'm creating a variable called as is watching video true y'all are watching the video of course so that's why this is true right now and uh, if over here i'm checking a condition this is this i'm going to teach y'all in the next upcoming videos but this is quite interesting to see so that's why i want to show y'all right now so if watching video that means if this is true this condition is satisfied then it will enter this uh, it will print this okay so it will print whatever the value of this is uh, variable is and then it will print the type of it so let's do that and it says true and it says yes now you know what let's change this to one is watching video and let's run the program and it says one and it says int but if you notice both the time it went into this condition both the time this condition was satisfied and if i say zero or even if you say false right it won't print anything so let me show you see when i put zero nothing was printed okay let's do one thing let me add another print statement outside if condition okay and uh, we'll try to print this outside if condition was printed but this print was no, never printed because zero is also interpreted as false over here or you can say false is interpreted at zero whatever you want to say but this is what it is in python and let's say if we put one over here right and run this again it says one and integer that means this print statement was executed and outside if condition this was also executed so this is quite cool right and we'll put it as false and we'll check again 
and only outside if condition is printed. So this is one of the quite interesting fact of Python that I like. Now let's comment this and go to the next data type that is float. Float or you can say decimal in Python. So let's call it decimal. Let's say you want money of the user. How much money user has? So I'll call it as money and we'll assign it. Let's say I have only 50 point some uh, random number, let's say 45. So now let's try to find out the type of this variable. So print, we'll call it type, come on, skip this type of money. Let's save and run this. It says float or decimal, whatever you want to call, but this is what it is. Let's try to take input from the user. So I'll call it as money again and input, enter your money. Let's run it again and say 10, 15.23. It will say string. And we, in order to convert that, we will again have to do the type casting. And for that, you just have to type in float over here. Float, go at the end, close it, and let's rerun the program. Enter your money, let's say again 15.23. And now it gets converted to float. Now let's look at our final data type of this video that is complex numbers. I have hardly used it because it never came in useful for me. But anyways, I'm going to show you how to create complex numbers. So let's say you want to assign it to com complex underscore data. And in order to create a complex data, right, we have two ways. One is just put in complex over here and in this pass in whatever data you want. So let's say one plus two. 1 plus 3 sorry and we'll print the data type so type and we'll pass in complex data we'll save let me clear this quickly and we'll run it and it says the type of this data is complex so this is how we create complex data in python variable data type and input are three important concepts in python and by understanding this, you will be able to create your own Python program. And you know what? You can send email in Python very easily. So go and check this video out.